you can see uh, the lovely city of Santiago, uh, Chile, and uh, the beautiful surroundings. But uh, more importantly, I want to introduce you to some of the team um, that we have with us today. Um, for those of you I haven't met before, hi, I'm KK. Um, I'm here with Expedia Wine Club Cruises. Uh, but more importantly, you have your two hosts that are going to be sailing with you who are on the call with us today. Um, we have Brian Murphy, of course, who's the co-owner of Expedia Cruises North Bay here in Petaluma, California, and he's the president of Expedia Wine Club Cruises. Um, Brian creates all these amazing adventures for us, so very exciting. Glad you're here, Brian. And of course, then we have uh, Mr. Know Everything About Wine extraordinaire. We have Paul Wagner. Uh, of course, he's our senior wine advisor for our wine tourism here at Expedia Cruises um, and Wine Club Cruises. He does so much, you know, um, he knows everything about wine. He's been everywhere. I have traveled with him myself. Uh, so much fun to travel with Paul. Uh, his stories, of course, are amazing. Many of you have traveled with him before. Um, but if you haven't had a chance, I'm just telling you because you're traveling, you may also want to ask him about one of his books that he's authored recently. Uh, there's a new one out. And I love his mystery series. So um, it's a perfect thing to take along with you traveling. So, Paul, in addition to all of your wine, it's not there too. Um, so, so much going on. Um, I won't talk about everything today. I will just uh, get us started and then I'll pass this off. Uh, of course, all of you know that you're taking a wine cruise to South America. And hopefully you're as excited as we are for you uh, for this adventure. And, um, you know, this itinerary is simply brilliant. Of course, you all know where you're going. Hopefully you remember where you're going, uh, starting, of course, in Buenos Aires, uh, going all the way around uh, the tip of the South America and ending up in Lima, Peru. So one of the things that I did for you was um, I did, and we can come back to this later after we've talked wine and whatnot. Um, but you can notice that I've included for you, and you might want to mute um, your microphones, that's okay. Um, but I've added some temperatures to uh, some of the places just to kind of give you an idea of the wide range you're going to experience. Um, I have been very fortunate to have done this route a couple of times. Um, and so it's quite exciting that you're going to start in the warmer climate up in Buenos Aires. It dips down a bit as you go down around the Horn. And uh, as you see, you come back up the side, it goes back up. So you start in the high 70s, low 80s, and you end in the low 80s. So it's kind of interesting as you go around. So when we talk a little bit later about what to bring and what to pack, hey, we'll talk about that. But I know what's most of interest to all of you is the wine. <laughs> so with that, I would just like to invite uh, Brian and Paul. It's all you guys. Okay. Well, thanks, KK. So as you know, this long-awaited cruise is almost with us. For some of you, it's been a probably a, almost a three-year waiting process as we got through the COVID piece. But and we ended up rescheduling this. So, but yes, we're going to do a series of different events and seminars. And um, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but there's six different wine dinners. Maybe we want everybody to be I know you do right now, and then we're going to open this up to Q&A after we get through just these couple slides. But we've got, um, I, I've got the wine list now from Paul and there's over 50 regional South American wines that you're gonna get a chance to experience under Paul's tutelage about it between a series of dinners and seminars. And then we got a couple surprises in there for you that you're gonna really enjoy. Uh, that um, will add even more to that experience. Um, I, this list we've sent to you previously uh, so that you can plan your other dinners huh? on board. So if you haven't got this list, uh, reach out to your travel advisor and have them send it to you. 
Um, but uh, there's some real exciting things. And Paul, I'll let you kind of jump in and if you want to talk about anything that's uh, on your agenda with this. Uh, well, just that I'm excited. We're getting great support from all three countries in terms of the kinds of wines we're going to be able to provide for you. So um, we have um, uh, fabulous wines from, from Uruguay. Those of you who don't know the wines of Uruguay, quite famous producers of both Albariño, that classic Spanish grape from northwestern Spain, does beautifully, beautifully in Uruguay, and Tanat. Um, a grape that has almost disappeared off the planet in, in Europe, um, but because of the colonization um, has, has really done, and probably the best tenant in the world is now made in Uruguay. Um, and, and similarly, we have, we have great um, Torrentes in Argentina, which is a, na I don't want to call it a native grape. It's a grape that hybridized itself there was a vineyard of Muscat and a vineyard of Chardonnay. And when two grapes love each other very, very much, uh, sometimes mommy grapes and daddy grapes get together and what, what Muscat and Chardonnay made was Torrontes. So it has a little more structure than, than Muscat, but it has um, some of that same aromatics, delicious wine. And depending on where it's grown, whether it's grown down in the flatlands or high up, it's grown at 9,000 feet in the Andes, uh, can make stunning wines. And then I've really called a couple of wineries down there and insisted that we get some of these wines. Um, Argentina is famous, of course, for Malbec. We'll have wonderful Malbecs. Um, one of my graduate students at the MBA program that I teach in in, um, in Europe uh, has a winery in Argentina. He's letting us taste some of his wines. And then some real unexpectedly wonderful wines. We're getting a, a Syrah from Pernales, which is San Juan province um, in Argentina. Nobody knows about this. It's one of the greatest Syrahs I've ever had in my life. So all of that from Argentina, and we haven't even talked about Chile, which, you know, is has every bit the variation in climate that California does. And we're going to have everything from, uh, we're, we're tasting wines that are grown down on the, on the polar latitudes, all the way up to wines grown at 10,000 feet, uh, wines that are grown in the desert, wines that are grown on the coast, um, and including... Some, uh, a couple of wines from Chile that are made from what they call pais. Um, you may also know it in the Canary Islands as listran, but it was the original grape planted by the missionary fathers who came to California, and we call it the mission grape. Um, so we're going to be tasting history. We're going to be tasting the future all on this trip and all over uh, South America. Should be fabulous. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, KK, I, you can kind of move us to the next one. And I think you were gonna talk about this slide. Sure, I just thought I would share with everyone a little bit about uh, Oceana Marina. I don't know how many of you have experienced the ship before, but there's so much to do on board. Uh, you're very fortunate to have some days at sea. Uh, that's not always so readily available um, on Oceana because they're very itinerary focused, which is great. Um, but having a few days at sea gives you the opportunity to, uh, to enjoy some of the things that are available on board. Uh, you'll see the first picture there one of my favorite things to do is um, indulge in the culinary center. Um, there is an opportunity to actually take culinary classes and, and cook and prepare something that you can taste. Uh, it's very fun. They have a great program. You can reserve some of these in advance. If for some reason you don't get one in advance, make sure that you wait list on board because they frequently clear them. Uh, so that's an opportunity. They do have great entertainment in the evening. So you're going to find a variety of things to do in the evening. Um, for those of you who would like to just take a little pampering time, uh, they, of course, have a great spa. You can uh, take advantage of that as well as um, I want to remind you to please um, make sure to pack a swimsuit because the hot tubs will be nice and toasty and it's a kind of a fun place to be on an afternoon while at sea when it's a little cool outside sometimes down around the horn. 
Um, your Many of your specialty restaurants uh, will be enjoyed during your special wine dinners. We're very excited about that because it's a great place to uh, really experience the pairings of the wines. Um, the one that is not included um, or taken up, I should say, by one of the wine dinners is red ginger. So I wanted to make sure that you all take the opportunity to book a red ginger uh, dinner in advance. Um, this is one of my favorite restaurants on board. Boy, the um, the miso glazed, um, it's now a halibut or a bass, depending on, it could be that it's a Chilean sea bass, which I know is not from Chile, but um, <laughs> it's still brilliant. Uh, the lobster pad thai is to die for. So there's some really fun and interesting things to experience there. So I want to make sure that you know uh, those are complimentary. They're uh, fun things to do. There's lots to do on this ship. She rides so beautifully. Um, and because, of course, she was designed for many more passengers, um, as far as the tonnage is concerned. But then, of course, um, because they have indulged in so much space per passenger, the staterooms are larger, the public rooms are larger, it makes it for a really comfortable, uh, lovely experience. So um, just some ideas of many of the things that you can do on board. But, you know, we'd also love to hear questions that you might have. Uh, so let me actually stop sharing for a bit and invite you uh, to, again, uh, turn your cameras on, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, maybe wave at me, and, and um, we'd love to answer those questions. Does anyone have any burning questions that they've been dying to ask? Oh, perfect. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> hey, KK, I just want to talk a little bit about the food on the ship, because yeah. um, I think Oceania has the best food on the ocean. Um, and yeah, I don't know how many of you, uh, watch cooking shows. My wife is a professional chef, so I don't have to watch many cooking shows. I get to see it every night in my kitchen. But, um, if you ever watch Jacques Pepin, he is the culinary advisor to Oceania. And, uh, the thing that comes across more than anything else from Jacques Pepin is not that food is everything, but that food is a way of communicating love for other people. And he really communicates that in his shows, and he really develops menus that uh, capture that sort of sense that I'm not here showing off. I'm cooking something that people are going to love because I want to see him happy. And Fresh Ginger, I think, is my favorite restaurant on any ship. Um, and, and those other restaurants are good. I, I'm hoping, in addition to the entertainment, that we're going to see Brian do some karaoke singing. So, um. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> something you really want to see. Of course, if you dance. get me to drink enough, I might just do that. So. Well, Brian, we can dance. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so what kind of questions do you have? Feel free. You have us here. We kind of did this get-together so that we could answer questions. Tracy, I see you raised your hand. Go ahead. So at least eight of us play pickleball. And on the schematic for the ship, it shows a paddle tennis court or some kind of tennis court. Anybody who's been on the ship can tell us a little bit about that. So I can. The, um, the paddle tennis court, um, I understand from others who have just returned that they did do um, I, and I don't know if it was a modified pickle um, pickleball a uh, court, but they were certainly up there playing and um, they had a great time. So uh, yes, I would certainly plan on it. Okay. We've, we've modified before we get through it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Absolutely. Then I saw that uh, there was a chat question. Oh yes, Tom, you're asking about how soon you can make uh, your dining reservations. And yes. Judy, I see that you put there on the 13th. I believe most guests can book them now, um, but it could be, uh, Kathy's shaking her head no. So the 13th is the date for most of you. I think well, the only exception might be if you're a suite guest. Yeah, if you're in a penthouse suite, it's open now. Right. Um, for the other state rooms, right. But that's yes, right definitely. around the corner. Um, and we can go from there. Okay. What other questions yeah. might you have? Okay, Goff, go ahead. So since the specialty restaurants are being used for the wine seminars, et cetera, et cetera, 
have they been taken out of our or the guests allocation of yeah. availability and can they get them back in some shape or form so i'm gonna go ahead and take that one brian um all right the, the um so while they have been taken per se uh for the wine dinners uh no you can't get them back in advance however this ship is absolutely brilliant once you get on board if you go to the maitre d's and um and let them know that you would like to um to dine especially if you're flexible um or if you go up and say hey you know what we just want to dine anytime or do you have room tonight you'd be amazed at how great they do at letting yeah. you have additional dinners and there's no cost. So uh, while other ships will, if you go more times, they will charge you, Oceana doesn't. So uh, the great news is that, yes, there's a great opportunity for you to have multiple more dinners um, arranged on board. And to kind of stay with the theme, um, there is someone's asking about um, what evenings will require men with at least a sports jacket. And I would answer that there is never a requirement for coats or ties on board Oceana. Um, so I know that there are many guests uh, who choose to bring a sports coat and you are welcome to, but it is never required. Right. And one more note about the restaurants is if you can adapt yourself, we are after all are in South America. Well. And if you can adapt yourself to the South American uh, schedule, uh, which means dining later in the evening, it's always easier to get a reservation then. Um, so, um, you know, in Buenos Aires, restaurants don't open until 8.30, 9 o'clock. And um, just, just get used to the Latin American schedule. Sleep in in the mornings, take a siesta in the middle of the day. We should have a great time. If you have trouble sleeping, I have plenty of wine. <laughs> so along that line, do we have a seating uh, time for dinner when we're not together? No, that's open for you. And um, and so what's really fun is that on the 13th, you can go in and you can make reservations in the specialty restaurants, but you don't need to uh, for any of the others. So for the main dining room, um, you don't need to make reservations in advance. You can just go in and they will seat you again because of the way they've designed the ship to be such a such great size compared to the number of guests on board. Um, you really never have a challenge. And one of the things that I love about traveling with a, a group of like-minded wine enthusiasts is we tend to get to know one another and say, hey, shall we, shall we get together for dinner at this time or this place? Um, that kind of organically starts to happen. So um, feel free to, to chat with one another as you go along the cruise and, and, and dine together at other times. I will tell you one of the secret places to have dinner on the ship is actually in the back of the ship, the Paris Cafe for dinner. And people would call it a buffet, but it has all you can eat lobster tails. <laughs> All you can eat lamb chops and steaks and sushi, sashimi. <laughs> uh, I will tell you that the back of the ship is uh, a pleasant surprise when you get back there for an evening meal. That, And you don't have to dress at all. If you want to wear your shorts and a t-shirt, that's just fine back there in uh, that area. Um, I see, I think Kathy's asking the questions. I see all the wine dinners that have already been planned. How many reservations can guests make on the 13th? I believe red ginger. If you are a non-sweet guest, it is uh, red ginger is what you can make a reservation for. But to KK's point, I've been on Riviera and Marina, oh my gosh, I don't know, 12, 14, 15 times. And any time I ever wanted to eat in a specialty restaurant, if I went and checked in with the maitre d' about 6 o'clock and said, hey, if I want to have dinner around 8 o'clock, do you think I can get in? I have always gotten into those restaurants. So um, don't feel like, oh, my gosh, you know, you're going you're gonna to have a fabulous experience when we do the wine dinners in there uh, because, of course, we're pairing wines with uh, 
a menu that you will love. Um, so don't feel like, oh, I'm getting shortchanged. You're going to, you're going to have a fabulous meal in there. Um, so the ones that we have there. Uh, when will we be meeting on the first day of the cruise or when's the first time the group will get together? The first time the group will get together will be for a welcome reception at six o'clock in Horizons Lounge on the 27th. So if you don't have the schedule that we showed earlier, please reach out to your travel consultant. They can get it for you. Uh, feel free to reach out to Brian, which would be B Murphy at ExpediaCruises.com. That's my personal email. I'm happy to send it to you. And if you have any questions that you said, oh my gosh, I should have asked this, but it's the, the webinar, our little meet and greet here is over. Please feel free to send me any messages that you'd like or questions that you have. Or suggestions for which song he should sing on karaoke night. That's and that's the other one. Yes, I have a very limited repertoire, so you know, maybe I should. Okay, okay. I, I have one question about: um, Is there a way to pre-schedule uh, spa times? Like when we're out and I, I looked on the website, and other than talking to the maitre d when we get on the boat, I mean, can I, I looked? I couldn't find any. So there is a special telephone number for uh, advanced spa um, treatments uh, reservations. And so I can make sure that we can get that for you. I'm making myself a little note here. And so yes, there's a special number uh, that Oceana has for making those appointments in advance, but it is a telephone number. It's kind of weird. It's not automated, but it's, uh, but they do have a number. Great, thanks. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, what other questions might you have? Feel free. Dominica, I think you had made plans for us because the group is going to have a pre-trip and we're going to arrive in time for the dinner before the, the cruise. Is that correct? So... I assume that this will all be that people know where to get us to, or I will get all the information on how to get to the restaurant. Yeah, that's a great question. So for those of you, there's uh, there are lots of things, different things going on for several of you prior to the cruise. And so there are some of you who are on a pre-cruise uh, that actually starts in Santiago uh, and then continues on and ends in Buenos Aires. And there is a dinner um, in Buenos Aires uh, the night before the cruise. And um, and then some of you are on a uh, pre-Buenos Aires in Iguazu uh, that also includes that dinner. Uh, and then there are some of you who have um, decided to come in a little early and have purchased to be part of that dinner. So for all of you, uh, we will be sending out uh, details of exactly where to meet and when um, so that you can get to that dinner. And if there's any of you who don't know about that, please reach out to your consultant because, um, you know, everyone has the option to, uh, to join in on that dinner. Um, so if you're not on one of the pre-cruise packages, uh, please reach to us and, um, and we can, we can certainly uh, get you that information. Uh, there are, of course, because everyone's doing a little bit of this and that, um, there are a variety of, uh, choices that you've all made. Uh, I'm sure that you've all heard too that one of the options is the transfer to the ship. There is a, a special transfer that was planned um, where you can be picked up at uh, the one of the two hotels that we're using and have a half-day sightseeing tour that ends at the ship. And so we are currently finalizing reservations for that. So if you don't already have plans um, for how you're getting to the ship on the a day of arrival, if you're coming in early, uh, that's one of the options that you have as well. Um, so again, it's just really important that you talk to your consultant so we know what it, what it is that you would like to do if you don't have that all nailed right. in already. We, we polled everybody about the pre-dinner on the 20, the evening of the 26th, and at least from all the consultants, I've gotten a yes or no 
So if uh, if you were to want to change your mind because you said no and now you want to say yes, right now there's 36 people going to that dinner. Um, and if you wanted to change, please let us know right away because we are finalizing the reservations for that over the course of the next probably week. Yeah. There's also a question here from Don and Dexter about, is there a limit on bottles of wine we can purchase on the tours? And the answer is, there's no limit. The limit is how many you feel like carrying. Because of course, one way or the other, um, you're going to have to schlep those bottles back to the ship or onto an airplane or something else. But the, the wineries um, that we visit will be happy to sell you as much wine as you want to buy. Yes. And then there's some other questions here, too. Um, are there post-cruise alternatives for just the day we leave the ship? I believe we only received a two-day package. So uh, it depends on what time your flight is and when you're leaving or if you're staying overnight. Um, there are some uh, day tours uh, of Lima that can be taken. So um, if you uh, if you still have questions about that and you're not sure about what to do, please reach out to your consultant. Um, I can work with them and, and make sure that we provide some options for you. Um, there are several guests who are taking late night flights that night who are just taking kind of a local day tour uh, type of thing. Uh, and then there are many guests who are staying over a night. Um, so they're also doing a tour. And then lastly, of course, we have quite a few passengers who are going on to uh, Sacred Valley, Cusco Sacred Valley and Machu Picchu, um, which I think leads right into Ruth's next question, which is, uh, is there a concern about the political unrest that we are reading about in Lima? And, um, you know, well, first of all, yes, there, there was some in that specific area. Um, that particular area is now open again. Tourists are going through, um, having a great time. Uh, there is a little bit of unrest still. I, you know, when you look at the advisories, um, it's if you were to try to drive it, it's about a 17 hour drive from uh, where they have this unrest to where we would be going. Um, it's in a real specific area where they have some concerns. It's nowhere close to where um, you are going to be uh, at this time. So um, I think that, um, you know, it's it's always a, a great question to ask. We feel it's important to be aware. Um, we're also talking about something that they're um, voting on and uh, negotiating at this time. And so by the time you were there, we are long past that period. Um, so we certainly don't anticipate anything. Um, I will never say never because, you know, the world is what the world is and stuff happens, but we'll continue to watch it. Uh, at this time, I'm not concerned. So, um, I think you're good. Um, and I'm trying to see, make sure I don't miss any of these questions. One other thing I'd mention about, uh, Peru is if you have one thing to do in Lima, it's eat. The food in Peru is the most sensational food you'll find. I mean, it can compete with France. It can compete with China. It can compete with anybody. Uh, an amazing array of cultural influences, African, uh, Spanish, Chinese, absolutely. Don't forget the, the prime minister or president for a while was Fujimori. So there's a Japanese influence. Plus you've got the local Inca and other uh, native peoples unbelievable seafood. You've never tasted ceviche. I had a friend who's a winemaker in Chile. She says, can you explain something to me? They have the same fish. They have the same limes. And every single time I eat ceviche in Chile, I say, why the hell can't it taste like what I eat in Peru? So um, I would just say, if, if I were taking a tour of Peru, I'd try to go to one museum and four restaurants. <laughs> But you can't do that in one day if I have to. Oh, yeah, you can. You just have to plan appropriately. <laughs> I, we have to leave at 1.20 a.m. Yeah. Day. Yeah, so a lot of the flights are that. I know I'm, I'm yep. the same way, too. So, so yep. I, I actually am th wondering how many people from Expedia group will be having a similar situation mm -hmm. and wanting to do a local tour instead of you know, um, Dominica booking us 
and then somebody else is doing a separate one. I don't know if it's possible to be together and have our suitcases together or whether we all would still need a hotel to freshen up or, or whatever. Is that, uh, John, it does get a little complicated to be truthful. Um, yeah. you know, we're, we have to be careful about um, what information we share about what other people are doing. Sure, um, I understand. And, okay. and so okay. that sometimes gets a little complicated. However, I would just say this, if anyone is on this call and they haven't made plans or they need help making plans for that day, so please so reach out to your consultant and let them know. And then I will ask them to kind of let me know and maybe we can come together and, and do it that way. So um, so if you don't have plans and you're leaving that evening uh, from Lima, and you would like some input um, or maybe to do something with others, please reach out to your consultant and let them know. And we'll we'll gather all that information together and see what we can come up with. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you very much. No, of course. Asking is everything. So if there's ever anything we can do for you, please make sure you talk to your consultants. Um, you know, many of them, they're just so experienced. And if they don't know, they come to me. And if I don't know, um, well, it would be interesting, but if uh, we will find out together, that's for sure. <laughs> but, okay, there's a question uh, in the uh, chat box there, KK. About currency. Um, and that's a great question, Tom. Thank you for asking. Um, you know, I have to be really candid to say, I don't exchange a whole lot of money prior to going to South America. Um and a lot of that has to do with the fact that they still are accepting U.S. dollars fairly, fairly regularly um, and can exchange fairly easily. And then if I do need something, a lot of times I'll take a, a specific card. Um, you know, I always am a big proponent of those credit cards that don't charge exchange fees. Um, and then if I need cash, I tend to withdraw locally. Um, I do also withdraw small amounts. And I make sure that I'm going to an ATM that's attached to a bank. Um, so I don't necessarily do them in the malls or that kind of places. Um, but I do use like an ATM from a bank to exchange or to withdraw local money. Um, but most of the time it's on a card. I have dollars with me. I take small denominations uh, with me. That's super, super important. It's the ones, the fives, the tens. Um, you know, you start going over a 20 and many places, you're going to get a lot of exchange of foreign currency in exchange for whatever you're purchasing. Um, but um, I think, Paul, you're shaking your head. I think that's what you experience as well, isn't it? Yeah, the only thing I would add is if you're going to take, and I love the fact that um, KK travels with large numbers of small and marked bills. Um, the, it's the signature of an experienced traveler. Um, but in particularly in Argentina, but also a bit in Chile, I, I, I didn't experience it quite so much in Peru. Um, when you get money to take on this trip, ask for fresh, clean bills. They don't like bills that are torn. They don't like bills that have people that have written on them. They don't like bills that are all wadded up the way the ones that got washed in your jeans look. They want money that looks like it's fresh out of the bank. So when you go to take a to take out a, a, a small amount of these small unmarked bills to take along, um, ask for nice, clean, fresh money. There you go. It's a really good point. Uh, and I've, I've first... literally had people at at restaurants and even at a newsstand look at a ten dollar bill and say, do you have anything? I, I won't take this. And you have a new one and have to thumb through the money to get one that looks nice enough that they'll take. And of course, I know that you all know this, but your passports are all current and you're going to make sure that you bring them along um, and have them handy. Um, you know, it's, it's a really silly thing to say, but I can't tell you how many people pack them in their, in their suitcases and send them off along and, uh, stand there at the pass at the, uh, airport and can't board their plane. So please make sure that those are not in your, in your luggage. Um, you know, some of the tips that of course I give to people, um, I always have a photo of my passport. Um, I know if you were to ask, uh, the officials, they will tell you that I'm not allowed to tell you this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I create a, an album on my phone. Yep. 
Uh, if you're not familiar with albums, um, look in your photos. You can create an album. And in my album, I have an album there called Documents. Yep. And in my album, I have a copy of my passport. Uh, someone's asking about their vaccination card. Believe it or not, nobody actually uses the vaccination card pretty much anywhere in the world anymore because, you know, those paper pieces, they just didn't have room for all the boosters that we've all had now. Um, but I do have a screenshot of that little QR code um, that I can get for my vaccines. I do have a screenshot of that in there. Um, and it's important that um, by having some of these things available, um, I often will send something to my, I have a Gmail account, for example, a personal account that's easy for me to access. I sometimes will send a screenshot of my whatever documents, for example, the, the cruise ticket. Uh, you know, we all get excited about a cruise ticket. I think Brian and I will tell you how many ships we have boarded without anything but a passport. Um, when you have your passport with you today, that's pretty much all you need. That goes for airlines, that goes for cruise ships. You need your passport. That's the, at the end of the day, that's what you need. If you lose all your other papers and you have your passport with you, you can pretty much get to where you want to go. But I do have a screenshot. So if I'm doing a custom itinerary and I have maybe my consultant has booked hotels for me or a transfer for me, uh, the telephone numbers of people, contacts that I need, um, I take screenshots of those. I stick them in that document so I know exactly where to go to find things quickly. Uh, or I'll send them to myself via email so that I have a copy without having to have a piece of paper with me. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't need a bunch of paper when I'm traveling to try to find everything. If if I have my phone, I have access to my email, I have access to everything that I need. Um, so so KK, those here's, are here's one ahead. more item to keep in that documents because I have exactly the same kind of album and I have a photograph of each of our car license plates. <laughs> you know, when you check in and there's a parking and they say, well, What's your license plate number? And you think, I can't remember that. Okay, it's in my it's in my documents on my <laughs> phone, right along with the passport and the COVID certificate and a couple of other things. Absolutely. There Big you go. Number. Big yeah. Number. So that's really, really handy. Believe it or not, I'm also going to encourage you to have your consultants, uh, if you have their telephone number or anything, make sure it's in your contact in your phone so that if you should need to reach out to them, um, that you have that handy as a contact in your telephone or even a picture of it and, and put it through. Um, your consultant, if it's an emergency of some kind that happens, uh, travel insurance. I'm hoping that all of you have travel insurance. Um, quite frankly, um, I'm going to stand on a soapbox for a second, but no one should be traveling today without travel insurance. Um, whether it's an un unexpected trip over a cobblestone or it's something that you come down with, um, all of those things are really important. If you don't already have travel insurance, I just want to encourage you to talk to your consultant about something that we call pack and go. It's a last minute type of insurance that you can get. Um, it won't protect you with a cancellation coverage, but it will give you other things like evacuation and medical. And so it's it's kind of my, if you don't have the, the big coverage that I feel that you should have, at least have that. Um, and of course you can still purchase that um, and that would that would get at least give you some coverage. And with that, I always say that once you have that policy, uh, whatever insurance policy that you have from your consultant, I want to make sure that you actually take a, a screenshot, uh, take a picture with your phone of whatever contact information that you need, as well as your policy number. By having those again in that same album, really, really simple. I'm not having to go through 10 pieces of paper to find out what to do in the event of emergency. Um, you know, I, I, I have seen so many times I'm the person that gets called when someone has a, an emergency and they don't have insurance. You don't want to be calling me because it's a really, really, really expensive phone call. Um, so, you know, when I get to have those conversations about a hundred thousand dollars evacuation, you don't want to have that call with me. <laughs> um, so let's make sure that you're all taken care of. Um, let's see other things. Um, Someone asked me earlier, uh, before we even started, they said, can I please talk about packing for this cruise? Um, and it's really funny. The reason I showed you those temperature swings is because you're going to start in the, um, as I said, in the high 70s. 
and then end in the high 70s, 80s. But you're going to go through through some dips in between. Um, one of the things that I've personally experienced having gone around the horn several times is that um, it can be windy. More than cold, it can be windy. And so I find that if I have, um, I layer rather than bring any heavy. This is not the type of itinerary that I would bring a big heavy coat for. Um, mm-hmm. This is the kind of itinerary where I would add a layer and then ha- add something that's wind slash water resistant on top because when you break that wind it's not as cold anymore so um i don't I, again i don't bring big and heavy because for a longer trip you don't want to have something bulky like that make sure that you have some really practical shoes with you um the beauty of the nature in the areas that you're going to explore is simply stunning you want to be able to to take those walks out uh, the Chilean fjords that you're going to see um, when you get up to Torre del Paine, the, the national parks and the extremes. I know, Paul, you've been to all these places, too. It's it's so stunningly beautiful. You want to be able to get outside. So you want to have really good walking shoes with you because it is uneven services. It is, um, you know, walking trails, uh, not necessarily all paved. So uh, you want something very comfortable. Yeah, I would say if you're going to bring one pair of shoes, bring a pair of walking shoes. You can get into my wine tasting wearing hiking boots. You cannot get out onto the glaciers in a pair of uh, elegant patent leather pumps. It just won't work. So if you have to choose between one or another, go for the hiking boots all the way around. The other thing I would say um, is this is alpaca land. And um, for those of you who are thinking about layers, I don't know if you can see it. I'm wearing an alpaca sweater right now that I bought in Chile. Um, Buenos Aires has them, uh, Ushuaia will have them, Puerto Montt will have them, um, and they're cheap and they're warm and they're resistant to moths, and I use them for everything from dinner parties to backpacking. And so if there's one thing you want to bring home on this trip, it, leave one of your sweaters at home and buy an alpaca sweater on the road. There you go. <laughs> I would agree with that. I have mine. <laughs> Yes. All well, right. And Any again, other there's questions? So varieties. Um, I just want to quickly mention too that um, make sure that you've taken some time to look at these shore excursions that they have, mm-hmm. um, so that you've done that in advance. And if um, Oceana is very, very good, if there, for example, if there's any that are on wait list, make sure that you actually do wait list them. Um, if you haven't looked at your excursions and you have questions, talk to your consultants. We can always uh, have a call together, but you've got some great destinations. You have opportunity to see penguins. You have such opportunities to see lots uh, on this uh, great, great South America cruise. So hope that you've experienced it all. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. So yes, if you have any more questions. Okay. Yes, yes. I see a couple, is that Tracy? So in the restaurants that we are having the wine pairing dinners, will the food be similar to what's on the menus there? Or are we actually really missing the menus if we don't go to the maitre d' and try to get in another day? The food that is used for the wine pairing dinners are the items that are on the restaurant menu. Regularly served in the menu. Okay, right. Thank you. And and believe me, if there's something that you see on a prefix menu that you say, oh, I can't eat that, they will replace whatever you want very happily. Um, you know, because of course, like everything, we can't know everybody's food allergies or tastes. And so feel free to say, oh, I, I don't eat this. Can I get this? And they'll, they'll be happy to do that. I was just more concerned about whether I was missing the theme of the restaurant. With They're the all wine. items that are on the menu from that restaurant. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. A, and and believe me, we're, we're on a 20 day cruise. You will have plenty of time to get an extra shot at those restaurants by doing what I recommended. And if you can't get in, you come find me on the cruise and somehow I will make it happen for you. Okay. 
Oh, I like that. Um, let's see, Ruth, you're asking me a great question. Uh, can you speak to things to purchase besides alpaca items? I hear leather is a great, is a good thing. I, I have to be honest to say that um, I don't shop at home. I only shop when I travel and um, I do pack. Hey, Paul, I know you're laughing because you've traveled with me. So um, I always pack on this itinerary an extra duffel bag or suitcase that's empty on the way out because yes, you're right. I do enjoy the leather goods um, throughout South America uh, are just brilliant. And for those of you who are spending a couple of days in Buenos Aires, I always get in trouble there because amazing European style fashions with the influence of South America. Um, so there's lots of shopping to be had along the way. The great news is that aside from really good quality, interesting things like the alpaca sweaters and so forth, um, I don't, it's not a tchotchke kind of place. So the things that you come home with are memorable things that you can actually use and um, in the future. So that's kind of fun. Okay, I think Tom, you had a question, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Where? okay, I'm ready. Uh, we noticed that the uh, excursion that goes to Laguna San Rafael, which is the big catamaran trip, we're booked on the last one because that's all we could get. Uh, it shows that the arrival time back at the ship is 30 minutes after the departure time of the ship. Um, is that normal? And, and is it a really fast catamaran? Or is that going to get fixed? It, it's good. Yeah, actually, we're going to, the ship's going to take off and the catamaran's going to catch us and we're going to do an as we cruise, like a jet refueling in the air, we're going to get you back on the ship while the catamaran is sailing at about 30 knots. Okay, and we'll be late for the dinner too. We don't want to be late for the wine dinner, you know. I was gonna say, it, what's worse is that we might miss a meal. Yes, uh, but no, the, the, it's a great question. Um, and the reason that they added additional departures is kind of like what I was saying before with the wait lists. They they will accommodate. Um, so no, they won't leave you behind. It's the cruise lines excursion. Uh, it is a great question though. So they will uh, they will make sure to adjust the schedule. Uh, to because you do want to take that um that it's a great catamaran uh trip out there um it it, it rivals alaska um there's um just a lot to be seen so but don't worry they will make sure that you are back in time um for the ship okay Not once we get on board we're going to see what we can do about getting on an earlier one yep so, absolutely and and that's we'll a tell them we know brian there you go there right there you go you tell them you know we'll brian. never get it <laughs> well, make sure and, and you that, go that, that, that kind of leads to the comment that don't be afraid to wait list for different things you know when people get on board all of a sudden they may go oh that's not really what I want to do I want to do this and so that it's quite common to have shore excursions that may be sold out right now they will open up so don't don't be taken back with some of those things and then you can always use the i know brian <laughs> they may laugh but it's okay and i like right. the wi-fi question um so um the ship has um wi-fi as all ships do i'm not going to fib to you though I've ah. not been excited about the speed of the wi-fi on board oceana um it just is what it is, but it is available. So um, it's there. There's a reason it's free. <laughs> <laughs> because then they don't have to refund your money about the Wi-Fi. And I would, after being on, you know, this, this ship and or its sister ships many, many times, it's when everybody get on the Wi-Fi early, Right. or late and you know when everybody comes back to the ship at four o'clock in the afternoon yeah nothing works very well so um don't plan on streaming too many things uh with their wi-fi but i haven't been on the ship since covid so maybe it's gotten better we'll see i was on the marina in august <clears throat> i can promise you that it's still a little okay slow, it's still the same I think that the reality is, is that to Brian's point, when everyone else is using it, it really slows down. So um, a couple of things that I do, and this kind of goes into one of the other questions that was asked about an international phone, is I do make sure that I have um, my Wi-Fi calling turned on to my telephone. 
um, because that way you can actually make like either Skype calls or I use WhatsApp. I don't know how many of you are familiar with WhatsApp. Yeah. Um, we or make Signal. sure. Uh, yeah, the other make, app is Signal. It works equally well. Signal's another one. Yep. And uh, <laughs> for me personally, because I use WhatsApp, I make sure that all of my main family members that I may need to be in touch with or or work or whatever, that they have WhatsApp as well. And so that way we can communicate very easily. Um, but there is definitely Skype calling or internet, excuse me, internet calling, Wi-Fi calling is, is an option. The ship does have um, a satellite service for emergencies as well. Um, so you can always make those kind of calls. But I guess more importantly to me is the question of, do I need an international phone. An international phone, no. An international plan, yes. Um, I feel that everyone should, let's face it, is there anyone here that does not travel with a cell phone? Okay, so bearing in mind that we all travel with a cell phone, every carrier today has some form of simple internet plan, whether it be the $10 a day plan or some kind of plan, some of them have an unlimited international plan, I encourage you to talk to them because when you arrive in a foreign country, whether you need to be in contact with a transfer service, whether somebody needs to update you on a change in itinerary or your flight schedule change or whatever it is, if you're hesitant about turning your phone on because of that plan, I would just say that for if it's a $10 charge for that day, um, that's much less expensive than not knowing what the heck is going on. So I have a strong personal belief that I get to a place, I turn on my phone the second I get off the plane so that if there is any changes that I can be alerted and I know about it and I can reach out to if I have a transfer company that's picking me up and I have a telephone number, I want to be able to call that number. So I have a strong personal um and really, that is from experience. I Again, yep. Yep. I, I deal with all the passengers who get lost because they didn't turn their phones on when, in fact, there was a message for them. So highly, yeah. highly encourage it. Uh, um, I have I have T-Mobile service, and it is brilliant at this. They literally charge 25 cents a minute for international calls pretty much anywhere in the world. And data is free um, at, a, at a slow rate. But I'm not worried about watching movies. I'm just worried about getting information and it works perfectly. Yeah. Um, we have a, another question here about is it, will it be easy to ship wine home? Yes. From this trip? And I'm going to tell you that the answer to that is no, and it's not because of Chile or Argentina. It's because shipping wine to the United States is a pain in the neck. Um, and it has to go through customs and you have to pay duty on it and all the rest. And it's a pain in the neck. Um, the good news is you can check wine in your luggage, and uh, Brian often brings a, a shipping, a wine shipper that he fills with wine on these trips, and he just checks it on the way home. So there's an easy 12 bottles. And the other thing is that uh, although we will be tasting a number of wines that are not available in the U.S., um, a lot of the wineries that we're going to visit at least have some product in the U.S. So it may be possible to talk to them about um, if, if it's not in California, is it possible you might sell it in Florida and then you can get some that way. So there may be ways to wiggle that system. But I would count on if you really find something you love, because we're tasting some pretty unusual wines here, um, I would say the best chance is to check it on your way home. Okay. I, I never travel without a line check. Yes. <laughs> any other any other questions we can answer for you? Okay. Looks like we're clear. Are you excited okay. about going? Yes. Yeah. Well, we're we're certainly looking forward to uh, spending time with all of you, and I know we're going to have a great time. So um, again, I gave you my email, B Murphy. Yeah. M-U-R-P-H-Y at ExpediaCruises.com. <clears throat> Don't hesitate to reach out to me for any other questions or anything I could assist you with. Scott, go ahead. So my wife is uh, very subject to seasickness. And uh, so any suggestions? <laughs> 
she thought yeah. she was really not so sure she really wanted to do this trip, but I really want to do this trip. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, there's lots of things you can do. There are, depending on um, how she responds to things, there are, of course, the new watches um, that have the, the um, it has the, it hits the pulse with a little uh, tap. Those are really popular and they seem to be effective. Um, there are many medications, um, of course, you know, if, if there were one versus the other, there's boning, but there's Dramamine as well. Uh, boning, of course, is the one that you can have a glass of wine with. So, you know, that tends to be more popular. I would also share with you that the ship has, you know, they have mescaline available all the time and it's free at the front desk. So if you're not, if she's not feeling well, um, go down and uh, to the front desk and talk to them and they will, they will literally give you the pills um, that you can take and the, um, the doctor on board can even administer if you should have rough weather. Um, the doctor can administer a shot and she will take a good 12 hour nap and feel much, much better at the other end. <laughs> one other, one other tip, Scott, that, and my wife also suffers from motion sickness pretty mm -hmm. readily. Um, she's a big believer in boning over Dramamine because it makes you less drowsy, yeah. um, but candied ginger. Yes. And you ginger, uh, well. ginger, ginger does in fact uh, have a positive yep. impact on this. It's cheap. Um, and yeah, most grocery stores or baking, you know, baking stores have candy ginger, just a little nibble of that. And it often can, can, um, help a lot. And of course, if you're really feeling horrible, just eat a lot of ginger and your head will explode and <laughs> you won't worry about your stomach anymore. <laughs> I you think actually I don't the ginger pieces from Trader Joe's, they're great. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. well, and I think if you actually go to uh, the uh, Asian Fusion restaurant, they have a big glass bowl of candied ginger <laughs> right as the, where you check in. So at Red Ginger. At, at Red Ginger, yeah, yeah. At Red Ginger, yeah. yes. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Scott, you let me know if you're having problems on the ship and – We'll certainly make sure that we can get you. I'll let you know if my wife has any problems. I think I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope okay. she's Okay. All right. Well, with that, thank you, everybody. Uh, like I said, we just wanted to answer some questions, let you kind of, uh, you know, know where we're at. There will be documentation going out, like for the people that are on the pre-cruise in Santiago, I have one last thing that has to get finalized, but other than that, it is done, and I will be sending that to all of you with the itinerary um, that is very specific about what we're doing uh, with time. So with that, we will see you in South America. Yeah, so how great does it sound to time. say that, right? See you in South America. Yeah. Okay. Take care, everybody. Good night. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Mm.